So I said this to a multi-million dollar CEO two weekends ago. And I said, yeah, I just, you know, I just, this is part I can't give up. I just, you know, no, I don't think anybody can do it as good as me. He said, well, such a limiting belief. He's like, why can't they do it as good as you? Was his question. Why? I thought about that. I'm like, I don't know. They don't have the experience or the training. Maybe they don't know the process. And he said, well, whose fault is that? Guys, we have as CEOs to build processes, to build trainings, so that we can develop people in becoming as good as we are. So Pete, Pete's my right-hand man. Um, he is our manager of membership success for our mastermind community. And uh, excited to have him on here. And uh, Pete, I'm going to bring you up here in just a little bit, man, um, to talk about some of our core values. So just stay active with everyone in the chat. But what, hey, everybody, say hello to Pete, though. Everyone, give me some love in the chat. Say hello to Pete. Hey, everyone. <laughs> Come on. Give my man some love, everybody. Make sure you say hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We got a great crowd. Welcome to our weekly mastermind for real estate investors, real estate entrepreneurs, real estate professionals. And this is kind of the, the way we're saying it, who are serious about scaling beyond what's normal. Anybody want to scale beyond what's normal? For real. This is going to be a funny story. And, and uh, some of you can judge me for this, but the other day I was, I was sitting on my balcony and, I, and we look over Coronado Bay in San Diego, California. And every day I see these beautiful yachts, white, huge, you know, like 55 feet. And people are just kind of cruising down the bay. And I said, you know, I want to write down that one day I'm going to own a yacht. And here, but here's the thing. I didn't know how much a yacht cost. So I was like, well, how, how, much, is a yacht, how much does it take to own a yacht? And then I was like, oh, okay, that's, that's a lot. And then I wrote down, okay, what? Well, then I got to go figure out how much it is to own a yacht or like to, to manage a yacht, to, to run a yacht. And so then I had to go Google that. And then I realized, oh, okay, <laughs> that's a lot too. So, but, but here's what I, just so you guys realize, like, unless we scale and get to a place where we can become CEOs of our business and we're creating enough value into the world, to be able to live out these type of big dreams or goals that you have, um, you, you're not going to be able to get there. So that's the point of this show is to really bring on guests or bring up content or bring out ideas together as a mastermind uh, to really figure out how do we achieve something massive and not just to drive a yacht, but wouldn't owning a yacht be cool? Like, is that a bad desire that I have to be able to go out in San Diego Bay and bring my family and friends? No. Um, and so, you know, again, like, what do you want? Do you know what it takes to get there? Do you know how much value you have to create in the world in order for, for money to flow to you in order to get to those goals today? Um, I don't know. Hey, Pete, if you would, just turn off your video for a few. So, and I'll bring you back up here in, in, in a minute. Um, so that's what we're talking about today is really how to become, and, and honestly, this is kind of the, the point of the show is how to go from real estate investor to a real estate CEO. And some of you may not want to run a big multi-million dollar, billion dollar company, but to get out of the day-to-day -day activities of even managing a portfolio so that you can go live the life of your dreams. That's what we're talking about. So welcome. Welcome to uh, this weekly mastermind that we do every single week and uh, committed just to bringing you excellent content. So tell your friends that we're here, show up, stay engaged, because if you're engaged, if you're talking with us, I want to bring you up. I want you to ask questions. I want to ask questions to you so we can learn from one another. So that is the point of the show. This is live because today what we're talking about, what we're talking about today is the mindset that you have to change, that you're going to want to change in order to go from I'm an investor now or I'm doing all of these activities to how do I become the CEO of my business? So we run this real estate mastermind, right? And I would say most of our members are somewhere between 10 million to 250 or $300 million of assets under management. And then we have an advisor group 
okay? And we have about four or five guys on that advisor level. And those guys are doing somewhere between 500 million to a billion dollars of real estate, okay? And, and let me ask you the question. And, and if you'll be so bold to type in the chat, what do you think is the difference between those who are, who are at the 10 to 250 to those who are operating at 500 to a billion or more? Anybody want to take a guess in the chat? What do you think is the, bi the biggest difference between those? Dave says mindset. What else? Dave says mindset. It's a great, great offer. Networks, huge for sure. Longevity, for sure. You know, time in the business is definitely key. You don't get to a billion in a year, no doubt. Maybe you could. I've never seen it done. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't want to put it against anybody. Um, systems and networks, Kurt says, great, 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 great. Willingness to not limit God, Bethany says, absolutely. Here's what I have observed, and it's why we are so committed to this show and teaching what we're teaching and really building out, I think, going to be some of the best content for you to really get to that billion dollar level. I, 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 that is my goal. I want to create billionaires. I want to be a billionaire. I want to create billionaires. I want to create a network of billionaires because of the things that we can do together, right? The possibilities that are out there for us. Here's what I have observed to those that really get to that next level. It is that they start treating their role as an investor it is like they treat their role in their business that they become the CEO. And I know I'm using this word CEO, I'm gonna talk about what that means, but it really is a mindset because when you start thinking like a CEO, you start acting like a CEO, right? And your actions produce efforts that produce results. And so all of these guys, what I've observed, I've asked questions, I've, I've interviewed them dozens of times now, of just like, what's the difference, man? Like, what am I not doing that you're doing that's gotten you to almost a billion dollars in three years. Tell me, show me so I can start applying that. And all of them, all of them have said, you know, it, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not a real estate investor. Real estate is just the product. It's just the vehicle. They, they're, a, they're a CEO of an enterprise and real estate happens to be the thing that they do. I think most of us, if someone asked us what we do, we would say, I'm a real estate investor. I want you today to start answering that question. I'm a CEO. I'm going to get a hat. Who wants a hat? Because I'm, I'm making hats right now that just say CEO. Because I want to put that on every day and be like, all right, today I am not a real estate investor. Today I am a CEO. Anybody want a hat in the chat? Because we're getting hats made um, that say CEO. Because I, I, I want to believe that. I want to start there with me. And I, I want other people to believe that too. So um, no, Bethany, you cannot design it. Oh, <laughs> just because there's no design. I, there's nothing to design. It's going to say C E O. All right. There's no design. I just want to put it on. That's exactly what it's going to say. So, um, we've already have a design and we're getting them ordered. So I'll get you a hat. If you guys, if you guys stay, that's not the gift. I got a better gift. Uh, that's right. Dave said, that's why many billionaires can succeed in multiple business sectors. hundred percent. Cause they are, they, it's a, it's an algorithm. It's a formula right? Of how do I begin to treat my company, my business like a CEO? And so today, last week, if you remember, anybody remember the three lids? And the first lid is belief, which is what we're talking about today. The second lead, lid is leadership. And the third lid is operations, meaning all of us as current CEOs, now that we've decided we're a CEO, have a lid and the reason your business is not growing is not because of your employees. It's not because of the market. It's not because of macro or microeconomics. It's because you have lids that you have not increased to grow. How do I know that? Because I see deals happening every single day. I see money being raised every single day. I see people going to a billion dollars in this current market. Okay. So I know it's not the market. I know it's me and you. Right. So we have to increase our lids. So the first lid we're talking about that we're honing in on over the next, I don't know, however long we're going to do this is the belief lid. Truly believe that everything rises and falls with your belief. Right. So if you can increase, this is so key. If you can increase your belief in something that I believe I can go do that, 
then your your chances are much more likely. It's 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 why I wrote down, guys. Literally, this is why I wrote down. I want to own a yacht. But because before I wrote that down, I didn't know how much it cost to buy a yacht. I didn't know how much it cost to to manage a yacht. But now I know those things. Okay, I'm informed and I have a belief that one day I'm going to create enough value in the world to be able to buy a yacht. Now, will I buy a yacht at that point in my life? I don't know. Um, a, a good yacht, great question, how much is it, is going to be between um, a million to a million and a half, and it costs about 10% of the price in order to manage it with a captain, probably plus more because, you know, you got to have people to like make the food and stuff. So that's how much it is if you want to know how much it is on a yacht. To own a jet is like all kind of different money. So I looked that up too. Um, but now I know, and I have the belief to just like, you know, we're, we're going to go create that much value. So what we're talking about today to, to really get in there, or we're talking about this belief lid. And a lot of that is mindset. Guys, do not skip out on this. We're going to talk about leadership and operations, but this is where it starts. I'm telling you, I've interviewed, I know these guys, I have dinner with these guys. I, and I'm listening to what they're saying and I'm applying it. And it all starts here with limiting beliefs. And I'm going to give you four or five of them today. Okay. And for those of you who stay, we got something special. We've written an entire book. We put it together on the 10 limiting beliefs. Anybody want the book? Let's see if I got a photo of it. We've written this book. I'm really, really excited to get this out. Um, for you called the 10 limiting beliefs. Um, and, and, and it's, uh, we'll make sure we get that. So I'm gonna give you a chance to, to, to get a free copy of that before we get out of here today, but stay with me because we'll write your names down, but you gotta, you gotta stick around to know how to get that. Okay. So, um, yeah, it's gonna be a great book. So here we go. So belief, limiting belief. Number one is this, and guys, interact because I want to bring some of you up. I, I don't even know if we'll get to all four of these, but I got four we can share today because I think that's so much time we got. But I, I want to know, I'm looking at you. A lot of people want this book. Good to hear. So belief, limited belief number one is that to get to a billion is that you think this is the limiting belief that you have to execute everything perfectly. Okay? Limiting belief number one is that you think you have to execute everything perfectly perfectly and that is killing your progress pete it, come up here for a second i'm going to ask you what is hopefully he knows what is our number two core value inside of our company around this idea that you have to execute perfectly action our second is doing it is better than doing it perfect so anything yeah. is better than perfection yeah, done is better than perfect, okay? So done is better than perfect. Now, a lot of you will struggle with that because you're saying, well, Ellis, aren't we called to excellence? Aren't we called to, to, to work with excellence and do all that we can with excellence? Yes, but guys, this is so key. Excellence is a process, <laughs> okay? Excellence is a process. I don't know all of the ways that I can perfectly serve you yet, but I'm learning. Okay. So we've already started this webinar. We don't have it all figured out. Okay. We don't have everything that we want to do, but, but I'm still acting with excellence and I'm doing all that I can today to serve you with excellence, but it's not perfect. Um, and so you remember excellence is a process and perfection is not the end goal. We will never perform with perfection because serving and creating value is always a process. Best example of this, look at Apple. So when Apple has a bug or they have a glitch in the iPhone, what do they call it? Anybody, what do you get? What does Apple give you when there's a glitch or something goes, or it's not up to, up to, yeah, exactly, Pete. They give you an update. <laughs> this is brilliant. This is brilliant. They give you an update. Why? Because 
they're, they, they want to, they're, they're seeking excellence, building some of the best phones, I think, right? They're trying to create an excellent product, but it's not perfect because they realize excellence is a product and done is better than perfect. And so they get it out to you. And when they learn that things are not as good as they should be because users are using them, then they give you an update. And so guys, I just want to get this ingrained in your mind. Done is better than perfect. Done is better than perfect. Take action, take action, take action. Optimize as you go, right? And so I just see a lot of folks in our community kind of being held back because they want to know how do I make sure this CRM connects with this, that connects with this, right? Or, you know, whatever. It's like, just go start, just do it. And then we can learn as we go. Our goal inside of our company is to fail faster than everyone else. We want to fail faster than everyone else. That way we do things that you have seen, like this ebook. We wrote it. I think it's very good. We wrote it in a week. And if you like it, which I think you will, we'll write more content around it. But I'm not going to go spend 30 days writing this ebook if no one likes it. So we got it. We've already edited it. We got a landing page for it. I'm going to show you exactly where to get it after this. Um, and if you like more of this content, we'll produce more. So, so don't have to execute perfect. And by the way, if there are misspelled words and there's bad grammar and, and you guys email me, <laughs> I'm taking you off the list. Okay. Literally. I love it when guys will send me, you know, emails to my landing pages and be like, Hey Ellis, um, just thought you would want to know you have a misspelled word on your landing page. <laughs> I don't even respond. I'm like, actually, thank you. But no, I didn't want to know because we're, we're, we're executing. We also, you know, that landing page made us however much money or we got so many more leads. Yes, we'll optimize it. Um, but it's minor. It's so minor. So that's number one. Anybody can resonate with that? Anybody struggle with that? Maybe not. But I, th I think some of us do. And we say, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I get that. But then we get so hung up in the details. All right, so that's limiting belief number one. I want you to think a core value has got to be, guys, um, done is better than perfect. All right, number two. This is huge. So wait, hold on. Nolan's got a question. Let me bring Nolan up here. Nolan. Can you hear me, my man? Hey, how's it going? Hey, how are, how are you, brother? Doing good, doing good. Uh, I was just raising my hand about the hat earlier, so you're good. Thanks, <laughs> <man>. <laughs> hey, well, why I got you on here, man? Tell me, what I mean, that idea of done, being, you know, done is better than perfect. Is that something you struggle with, or do you? Do, is that something you resonate with? Talk to me. Oh, definitely. Um, I think you know, constantly trying to you know just keep moving from task to task and getting things done is you know is better than you know kind of noodling on something for and related, but you know, uh, you know, extended a period of time. So I agree with you on that. Cool. What are you working on right now, man, that you got to just, that you're kind of putting off that you just need to execute on and, and move on. Uh, I, I can't say that I'm not, um, I'm working on, uh, working on a performer right now. That's really important. So there you go. There you go. Awesome, man. Well, appreciate you being here today. If you got any more questions, raise your hand again. Okay. Oh, good. Thanks, bud. Thanks brother. Um, let's see. All right. So number two is no one can do it as good as me. Number two, no one as good as me. Have you ever, have you ever said this? If you, if you have said this, admit it right now. Okay. I wish there were two of me <laughs> or I wish there were five of me. Anyone ever said that in the chat? Be honest. I wish there were two of me. I have 100%. I've been guilty of saying this, that I wish there were more of Ellis's to run my company. And what I learned, you know, Samson says, I said that last week, Nolan, definitely, 100%. So I said this to a multi-million dollar CEO two weekends ago. And I said, yeah, I just, you know, I just, this is part I can't give up. I just, you know, no, I don't think anybody can do it as good as me. He said, what well, such a limiting belief. He's like, why can't they do it as good as you? Was his question. Why? Thought about that. Like, I don't know. They don't have the experience or the training. 
or maybe they don't know the process. And he said, well, whose fault is that? Guys, we have as CEOs to build processes, to build trainings, so that we can develop people in becoming as good as we are. It is true that people probably can't do what you do today. But, but, but whose fault is it if they can't do it 12 months from now? It's the CEO's fault, right? And so um, that is a limiting belief of no one can do it as good as me. And so what you try and do is when, even when you're hiring people, you try and go look for someone who's just like you or someone who, and here's the thing, they don't exist. It's a unicorn. Or even if you find someone who is, who's as good as you and you build your organization around this top tier talent, what happens when you want to scale even more? And then you can't find a third of you or a fourth of you or a fifth of you. At some point, you have to build processes and trainings to bring people, to elevate people up, right? To be able to execute at the level you want them to execute. And so Another thing I'm learning, guys, that we're implementing is that we are a training organization. I don't care what business you in, you're in, that should be a mindset. Write this down. I wrote it down, and I'm going to tell you exactly what we did about it. We are a training organization. So every day, our team trains on Cardone University. If you don't know what Cardone University is, look it up. Grant Cardone is a real estate investor, sales training guy, and he has some incredible training on leadership and sales and marketing. And so our team every morning trains on Cardone U. Why? Even my executive assistant trains on Cardone U. Okay. Sales training. <laughs> Why? Because she's going to talk to somebody someday. She's going to interact with somebody someday. Or maybe I want her to do more than just be an assistant. And so she needs to be elevated to the level of service that we want to provide to our clients. So everyone trains in our organization and I pay for the training because I'm making that investment into my people so that they can be excellent. Right. Um, talk uh, yeah, to tra training elders is tough because, um, you know, nobody's going to ever think just like you, nobody's ever look at the same things the way you do. And so, you know, regardless of the systems and processes that you put in place, you know, there's always going to be a little a level of disconnect. So, you know, trying to create systems that are a little more agnostic to the person that's doing it is really critical, um, in my opinion. And that's what I've, you know, tried to do. And, and uh, yeah, it's just a, it's an ongoing process. It's, uh, um, you know, some people are going to understand things better than others. And that's all you can do. 100%. Have you created core values in your organization, like things that make your organization distinct? Uh, yeah, uh, I have. Um, I can uh, have them written down here somewhere. I just don't have them up on my wall at the moment because I just remodeled the office. So, Does everyone in your organization know them? Yeah. Great. Um, have you created kind of like a brand house in terms of you know, when we interact with others, this is kind of the tone. This is the feeling that we want to give off. Like, this is how we speak. Have you, have you ever created anything like that for your folks? Uh, I think I kind of inherently do that with people um, when we're, um, you know, bringing in new partners or whoever we're working with, right? We kind of want to, you know, kind of set that stage and expectations, at, you know, up front, you know, right. so that it's uh, kind of uniform as much as possible. A hundred percent, but you don't have them written down yet though, right? No. Yeah. So yeah, that would be one thing too, man. I mean, if you have your core values written down, get them out there and then having that, you know, what we call, um, I mean, it's part of the brand house, but essentially it's our, it's our tone. It's our, what, what do I call it? Brand attributes. I think is, think is what we call it. We'll, we'll be talking about that in later weeks, kind of building your brand house, but it's that idea of like, how does anyone inside of our organization interact with kind of with clients? Right. And then our core values are the guide, the glue, that really help us determine who should we hire, who should we fire. And so I think you're right on, man. No one can ever replicate exactly what I do or how I talk or whatever. But if I'm creating core values, I'm training and developing them and I'm helping them think like this is like one of ours is kind of, we always want to be, um, uh, I call it brotherly or amicable right? In the sense that if you get on a sales call with me, it's going to be like, hey, bro, <laughs> like, I don't care how much money you make. I don't care who you are. It's like, hey, man, 
how are we doing? You know, it's very amicable. And so that being part of who we are as an organization, we never want to be, we're not like a formal, we're not like, hello, sir. Welcome to the Kingdom RBI Mastermind. You know, like, <laughs> it's not us. Like, we'll never be that. If I'm the CEO of a company, that will never be the case. Um, and so one of our things is just we're amicable, right? We're, we're brotherly, we're relational. And that is kind of one of the ways we're trying to, to replicate that. Right. And, and I hope so. I hope that's helpful, Nolan. But I think you're right on, man. If you got your core values written, that's a start because that's the glue of your culture. But trying to develop out some of the things that you think are just kind of the intangibles, if you could if you could write them out, that way everyone in your organization knows those too. That's kind of the next step of that. This, guys, this is like my favorite one. Because this literally, and I, we did some research to figure out like, what are the 10? I knew a few, I knew some, and I'm like, what are the other ones people struggle with? So we asked questions, we did some research. Here is one that when I read this, I'm like, guilty. <laughs> okay. And number three, limiting belief is this. It is my job to delegate. And I read that, I'm like, I thought it was my job to delegate. Like I, I'm supposed to give roles to folks because I can't be doing everything as the CEO. So I was like, what's wrong with delegation? Anybody know? Anybody want to guess? Anybody think it's their role to delegate? I, I really, really, I read this. I'm like, what's wrong with that? Because <laughs> I had the limiting belief, literally. Literally, I had the limiting belief. I'm like, I just delegate. This is, what, this is what CEO does. I'm learning constantly, guys. Oh, I'm learning so much every day. Then I want to come here and give it to you. Yeah, great stuff. Bethany says our job to empower, not as empowering. Well, I, and I think that's part of it for sure. Um, delegation without training or empowerment is not good, 100%. Here, here's here's the, the, the other side of that, what, what I'm learning is that it's not your job to delegate as a CEO, if you really like, you can delegate guys, but, but managers delegate. Okay. Does that make sense? Someone does have to delegate in the organization, meaning I give this task to a team member and I need to follow up and put processes in place and KPIs, right? Managers delegate CEOs cast vision. Mm, I was like, <laughs> no wonder I'm not in a billion dollars, right? Because I'm, I'm always delegating. I'm never casting vision or not enough of it. Literally this morning, where's Pete? He's, he said, I gave him this task yesterday. And then he's texting me this morning, all these questions, 7.30 a.m. And I'm like, why are you asking me all this, dude? <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't really care. And what I realized this morning as I'm preparing for this and I'm thinking back to my interaction with Pete this morning is the reason he's asking me all these questions is because I gave him a task with no vision of what I wanted. So I delegated something as a manager would do, but I failed to give vision as a CEO would do. And so if I would have before saying, hey, go do this, sat down and said, hey, man, here's exactly what I want. Here, here's what we're going for. Here's the feel. Here's the vibe. Here's the environment we want to create. Then I'm sure he wouldn't have probably texted me this morning about these things because I would have already expressed what we were trying to do. But instead, I just said, hey, go do this. You know, and then he, and then he didn't really know because he didn't really have a clear vision. So he's like, well, I don't want to make the wrong decision. So I need to come back and Right. So it's still costing me time because now I got to answer text messages about it. When if I would have just sat down and, and thought about exactly what my vision was for this, it's an event that we're planning and then delivered the vision to the team. Pete is way, way more talented. Like he's so talented, he could have gone and done it. But instead, instead, I'm trying to manage because I'm delegating. Um, here's number four, guys. Passionate about this one too. I love all of these. That's why I wrote this book. <laughs> Number four is I'm alone or I don't have the support or here, here's what I used to complain about. 
I don't have the answers, the experience, or the knowledge to become a million dollar or billion dollar CEO. Let me read that again, because if you're taking notes, I think this is so powerful. The limiting belief is I'm alone, or I don't have the support, or I don't have the answers, the experience, or the knowledge to become a million or multi-million dollar or billion dollar CEO. Guys, it's such a limiting belief. And the reason is, is because the answers are out there and it happens through relationships. Um, we have a mastermind for this reason. I'm in other masterminds for this reason. I've invested lots of money into showing up in rooms and environments. I've committed, you know, 30 hours of my week to putting together our own mastermind because this used to be a limiting belief for mine when I was a pastor and I didn't know how to invest in real estate and I didn't know how to go raise a million dollars for our deal. But I met some people and I showed up in the right rooms and I realized this isn't that hard. <laughs> You know, like, oh, this is how you can, you start talking to people and, and, and helping them understand about real estate. You know, these are the things I'm not doing to really grow to a million or a billion or hire, start hiring people. I had a, such a limiting belief that I can't hire someone. I couldn't hire an executive assistant because I wasn't ready to have the processes and the systems. And then, and then I met someone who just helped me understand like what I need to do to bring people on board. Right. And so you're, you're not alone, guys. You, there is support for you. You just have to make the decision to show up in those places, to make the commitment to get in the room. If you really want, and this is like, guys, I, I, I'm just preaching what I, what I practice. Why are you worried about what an event costs or a mastermind costs today when you're trying to get to a billion? The problem is most of us kind of think here, we're back here and we're thinking, I, I can't do this today because I'm right here. We're not thinking, I want to get here. What do I need to do today to get me here? And so, yes, we have a mastermind. It's not for everyone, but guys, this has changed my life is getting in powerful rooms, investing that, seeing myself as an asset and getting there. And so you're not alone. There's so many great organizations. There's so many great support groups. There's what I've learned about guys who've been very successful is that they're, they're very willing to help because they want to see their legacy continued. They want to see other people go and be great. And so you just got to find a way to get, get around them. And you can't do that sitting at home or on the internet. Like you got to come get in the room. So I got, I get a lot of emails. Guys say, Hey, Ellis, I got this deal. Let's partner. I'm like, have, have, have we done anything together? have you transacted with me? <laughs> like, seriously, you want me to come raise how much money for your deal, but you won't spend five grand to come spend two days with us? Right? So like, guys, it's a limiting belief that, that you don't have the support of what you need. Um, Got to get in the room with people. <laughs> so what did I do? Let's talk, teach me, man. Why, how come you asked me so many questions this morning? Um, one of the things that um, you are an incredible visionary and I'm so like when it comes to like the US, Ellis is the visionary and I'm the implementer. So for me, I'm Ellis is always dreaming up ideas and stuff. And then I try to put pencil to paper or rubber to the road kind of stuff so to speak. So sometimes you'll come up with an idea and then I'm just trying to fill in the blanks, trying to figure out what you think or what you're looking for. And then, Hey, tell them that text message you sent me that one time. <laughs> you remember that one? <laughs> I think you were, you were shooting down something I came back with. And I was like, I was like, I need more verbiage because. Yeah. Yeah. Was, he said, Hey, said he, he, he told me one time he said, he's Ellis. Can you text me something? 
could you like type two more lines? <laughs> <laughs> it's all, it's all shorthand. Like <clears throat> it's like you're, you work for the court. Yeah. 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 Cause this is the problem with visionaries guys. If you're a visionary, like it, you, it's in your mind, you already know the end goal, you see it, it's done. And so you're like, Hey, da, 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 da please go do this. And you expect, or we expect, this is me. I'm just telling this is why I'm bringing Pete up. So you can see like, and we expect Pete, who is not the visionary of our company. He's not saying he's not visionary because he is, but he's a great implementer that I expect that Pete's going to know everything I want him to do from a, from a literally six word text. Cause that's how I text, you know, literally I was like, cause I'm just moving so fast. And, um, so this, so, you know, bringing Pete on, even though I probably wasn't ready, guys, I wasn't a perfect CEO, has been the most developing thing for me personally, because now I got a piece, part of my team, Cheryl's part of our team, Alex is part of our team, you know, Noah, no, um, uh, Noel is part of our team. And so now I'm got to think like, how do I communicate and bring all these things together and it's just forcing me to expand and read and get better. And then having guys like Pete, who will just be honest and say, Hey man, like, I don't know what you want, or can you type a little bit more? has been really helpful. Another person that's really helpful on my team is my wife. So she's not necessarily on our team, but she hears a lot of our calls and the way I interact with our team. And sometimes she'll be like, this one time just, she, I'm sitting here talking to Pete and she, I got off the phone. Pete, I told you this, right? <laughs> yeah you remember the story yeah and my wife goes <laughs> i feel so bad like this is but this is what i'm learning and we got to learn and grow and develop as a ceo got to be committed to growth and taking feedback she said i can't believe you talked to him like that <laughs> and i'm like excuse me and she's like yeah, you're just so mean and you like can you imagine me being mean I, I, I mean, I am, I guess I can be. And I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, you were just so mean to him. Like he had an idea and you like shot it down. I'm like, no, it wasn't Pete's idea. I, we were just talking about, I was, we were just crushed. We were talking about the idea itself, not about Pete. And I was defending myself, of course, cause I'm like, I wasn't mean. We were just talking about the idea and you know, if Pete didn't like it and so be it. And then I just kind of sat with that for a while. I'm like, yeah, no, I need to own that because sometimes we are connected to our ideas and Pete did work hard to go figure that out. And I'm just sitting here like crushing it um, because, and again, I know the vision. I know that's not where we want to go. Um, so the, the idea ultimately did need to be crushed, <laughs> but the way I went about it was, was, was not right. Right. And I needed to really get his input on some stuff too. So I'm not the dream killer. I'm trying to build people's dreams. But that day, I was the dream killer. So, uh, Pete, what from an integrator standpoint, man, right? They're hearing from the visionary today. I'm curious from the things that you've heard today, you know, like what what resonated with you? What, what do you, you know, you've worked for lots of CEOs. I mean, you work for Exxon, you know, a huge company with lots of managers, CEOs, et cetera. Um, what, what, you know, what, would you say like, what does make a good CEO or what are these limiting beliefs that, that really resonated that, that you think people should really continue to work on? What stuck out? I think there's a few things <clears throat> like in my career, I've been CEO um, once and COO, I believe three times <clears throat> and then head of like US operations for Exxon. So I've had teams of like upwards of thousand people. And I think there's three things that things that stand out to me. One is that as a leader, you can never take the opinion that you know it all. Like you need to be in an environment where you're continuously learning. Like you may be the visionary, you may be the leader, but your job is to be learning from your teams at all times. And like you said, like there's oftentimes you need to rely on your team to teach you more things because they may, they may be the subject matter expert, you're not. So as a good leader, <clears throat> to be humble and to be willing to learn at all times and to not think that you know it all, but to rely and empower your teams to, to find the information and provide it to you so that you can put those pieces together and build the teams to execute those tidbits of information. Like you really just assemble the puzzle on the table. Your team is the one that brings the information to you. Um, and then I think some of the other things like Oprah said, it's stay in your lane. So as a leader, 
you can't do all things. You can't be all things to all people because then you delete yourself. And then I think the other thing is <clears throat> Richard Branson said it where he's like, do what you do best and farm out the rest. And I think sometimes we as leaders, you try to wear all the hats and you just, your bandwidth is only so great. And eventually you just end up doing, you become like a jack of all trades and master of none. And I think that's important as a leader. You need to stick to what you do best. And then like, so for Alice, if he's the visionary, his job needs to be to stick to being a visionary. Whereas a lot of times, like in the US model, you read the book Traction, some of the worst companies run in the worst manner when like a visionary tries to run operations. They just, that's just not how they think. They hate the job, they hate the role. They don't have that communication skill set. So I think as a, as a leader, um, just being willing to adapt, being personable, being um, humble, being willing to learn and continuously learning and, and learning from, from this, you know, the people that work for you, I think is, is powerful because like Beth said, like when people don't feel like they connect with their CEOs, obviously oftentimes it's, it's like a hierarchy thing where they feel like they're not important. They're not heard. And I think right. as to me, when I ran big companies, I had a thousand, um, <clears throat> a thousand reports or direct indirect reports, but every one of them could come to me at any time and talk. And I'd be like, Hey, because if a thousand people are bringing me information, I'm going to become a wealth of power because I can do so much for that corporation because I know so much because I've got so many people empowering me. But That's if great. I sat there and thought I knew it all, you know, I would never have that trust in my team and I would never become that successful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, what I hear from that man is like, people are not an expense. People mm -hmm. are an investment. Uh, people are an investment. Does it cost to have Pete on my team? No, actually it doesn't. Do I pay Pete? Yes, but it doesn't cost me because Pete frees me to do what I, what I do best, which is create. And he's right. Like I come up with 10 ideas a week, <laughs> like yesterday, like we just had a huge revelation of like what we should do with this webinar and what we're going to create and which, which will, you know, which will pay for Pete 10 times over. So like Pete doesn't cost anything to organization. Pete's a huge value just speaking from a CEO perspective, because then it frees me to do what I do best, which honestly is just create um, ideas and marketing ideas and, and right. How do we expand? So, you know, I just love that, man. People really are an investment. I love that idea of like, you're getting, you're getting, you're becoming more powerful, more knowledgeable, more influential because you're getting these shared ideas uh, from your team members. And uh, that's part of really bringing on great people too. So that's excellent. Yeah. Because if you have a big organization, you have multiple layers in your company, you're not, you can't spend time, you know, doing all of this, right? So Pete really is in charge of our mastermind events and Cheryl, our executive assistant, really is in charge of kind of lining the things up and or ordering stuff and getting the food. So I don't need to go cast the vision to Pete and then I need to go cast it to Cheryl. I just need to cast it to Pete. So Pete knows exactly what I want so that he then can go explain that to Cheryl so that Cheryl then can go and execute on what we need to do. The times that I've been COO, oftentimes the CEO was a visionary, but they weren't necessarily the best person for the implementation side. So that's where oftentimes, like Ella said, like he'll come up with 10 ideas and that's a typical visionaries. They come up with 10 ideas and one of them is just amazing. But then the execution side of that requires someone that really is strong on the operation side. So then sometimes some CEOs are able to do the implementation and the execution strategy. Other times they're just best off just to hand it to someone that's strong on operations and just say, hey, this is my idea, you know, formalize a, a program with systems and processes to put this into action. So sometimes it's just your ideas just come up with ideas and pass them off and then let someone else, you know, separate the wheat from the chaff. Guys, every week we'll be here um, and uh, without fail, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for joining and uh, go, go tell a friend about this. Make sure they get to this, the kingdomaria.com forward slash live, L-I-V-E, the kingdomaria.com forward slash live. You can, you can register for next week. And uh, we got some big changes to this webinar coming up. And what we're doing, again, the idea of the visionary has been working behind the scenes. 
We're creating something special. So stick with us, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, everyone.